Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. NVIDIA announced it'd be sunsetting the GeForce RTX 4080 and replacing that with the GeForce RTX 4080 Super. This came as a little bit of a surprise, but given what you're about to see in this video, it should be absolutely no surprise that the RTX 4080 is dead. Well, at least not if you're buying new. Let's do a GPU thing. Before we talk about the GeForce RTX 4080 Super, we need to address the 4070 Ti Super first. When we test GPUs in videos, we always address things that we show in the video, right? So it always pays to watch the whole video if you've got any questions, because I usually come through and answer those questions. We reviewed the OC version of the Ventus 3X from MSI. Everyone else had the non-OC version from the one that we reviewed. Ours was also a retail sample, and we were told that it wasn't impacted by the VBIOS issue, and as advised, we updated the VBIOS after MSI released a statement, and we saw almost no difference in performance after the VBIOS update with the Ventus 3X OC. We updated the testing that we did, and we included that in the video. We also tested a Gigabyte RTX 4070 Ti Super that we've got too, and we included that in this video for a bit of comparison too. I also wanted to mention that we don't have a Radeon 7900 XTX at all. I tried to get one for this video, but I just couldn't get one in time. We can't test cards that we just don't have. We also don't have a Founders Edition 4080 Super. We were supposed to get one, but Nvidia does Nvidia things. All right, onto the 4080 Super. In terms of power delivery, the 4080 Super, well, the one that we've got here, uses a 12 volt high power connector, which is no surprise here. And all 4080 Supers will use this connector. As far as power consumption, we noticed that the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 4080 Super Gaming OC pulls around 320 watts of power at full tilt over the stress testing period of about an hour. As far as testing all the cards that you're seeing in this video, we retested a bunch of stuff on our new i9-14900K test bench. We got a question the other week while we didn't use a 7800X3D. I don't have a spare one for testing. I've only got one for building and doing case reviews with. Typically, we test on both Windows and Linux to give you an understanding of whereabouts the performance sits with GPUs, but we're doing Windows only in this video because we haven't had time to do any Linux testing for any GPUs yet. We'll come back to this later because I got a big fat chunky Linux testing video in the works. So yeah, stay tuned. But let's kick it off with the 4K benchmarks. Now I want to explain a few things while we talk about these results. So please listen carefully because it's going to make a whole lot more sense. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 at 4K, we tested on ultra settings with either DLSS or FSR 3 based on the GPU being used, both set to the balanced preset. Which means each GPU is using its native upscaling technology. And yes, people do play multiplayer games with upscaling and frame generation. It's a thing, get used to it. This benchmark doesn't favor either GPU vendors. That's the point of a benchmark, guys. We're seeing what the performance is like. And what we're seeing with the RTX 4080 Super, it pushes ahead of the 7900 XT, but we don't have an XTX. I suspect the XTX in COD will sit somewhere between the 4080 Super and the 4090, based on the testing that we did with the 7900 XTX in Modern Warfare 2. And that sits pretty close to 4090 performance in this title in particular. Next up is Cyberpunk 2077. We wanted to test RT overdrive performance. Both vendors support this mode. The simple fact is AMD's ray tracing and frame generation at the time of testing this is just not as strong. We're not not going to include a result because it's bad. That doesn't make sense. That's the point of benchmarking. We use the beta AMD drivers that support frame generation. FSR and DLSS performance are quite similar regardless of if you're using an NVIDIA or an AMD GPU but the ray tracing performance here is, as you already know, not as strong on AMD. We've shown this in the past with Cyberpunk without ray tracing. It shows the performance is quite similar between most of the cards where they should be. As for the 4080 Super performance, it pushes well ahead of the RTX 4080. In Horizon Zero Dawn at 4K, we see the RTX 4080 Super being pretty close to the performance of the RTX 4080. This is a bit of a trend that starts to form, and we're gonna see this more through the testing, so stay tuned. Onto Unigen Superposition at 4K, we use the optimized preset here, and the difference between the 4080 and the 4080 Super is only a single frame. 
They're so close to each other that this can almost be called a margin of error. Finally, onto Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 4K, we see the same trend again with the RTX 4080 sitting right behind the performance of the RTX 4080 Super. But before we go on, I just want to say that after retesting the 4090 on this test bench for this video, it's kind of crazy how big the gap in performance is between the 4090 and the rest of the pack. It's, it's kind of ridiculous and yeah, I mean, it is what it is. All right, on to 1440p benchmarks. Back to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, we test the same way that we did when we tested in 4K. In this test, we're seeing the 4080 Super is considerably faster than the RTX 4080. We retested the 4080 just to make sure that this was correct, and we saw this result being pretty consistent with all of our benchmark runs. Next up is Cyberpunk 2077. We tested the same way that we did with 4K. AMD has a long way to go when it comes to ray tracing performance. Their upscaling tech with FSR is good, but their frame generation is a bit hit and miss. When new drivers release with full support for this and when CD Projekt Red implements it properly, we're gonna be coming back to this for sure. We can only test what is available to us right now. In Horizon Zero Dawn at 1440p, the RTX 4080 super performs within spitting distance of the RTX 4080. Again, this is close enough to call it a margin of error. It is very, very tight here. On to Unigen Superposition, we test this one a little bit differently. We test it with no motion blur and no depth of field. This one is pretty CPU bound at 1440p. And we like this one because even though it's CPU bound, really fast GPUs show their strength here. The RTX 4080 Super performs quite well here, opening the gap between the 4080 and the 4080 Super. A good DirectX 11 benchmark if you want to test for yourself. Finally, on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The performance is pretty average here, like it's a little bit better than the 4080, but you know, this is the trend. This is what we're seeing across the board here. The main issue that I have for me is it's hard to come to a solid conclusion because I don't have a 7900 XTX, so I don't know the full story. And that's where Hardware Unbox comes in. So shout out to Steve for giving me some details and some numbers on the performance of the 7900 XTX as compared to the 4080 Super. And what you're seeing in these graphs is the 7900 XTX is, yeah, it's it's looking it's looking pretty good compared to the 4080 Super. The other thing is here, when we're looking at the ray tracing performance from Hardware Unboxed, obviously the 4080 Super is going to perform better than the 4080, but that 7900 XTX from AMD still lacks a bit of ray tracing performance. But I. This is what you guys want to see. You want to see a comparison. And if I can't give you all of the information, I'm going to use my friends to help me out here, especially because I just couldn't get a 7900 XTX in time. So again, thanks, Steve. I really appreciate all of your hard work. You are the benchmarking master. Without you, little guys like us could not give everyone the correct information. So we appreciate you. And thanks again. All right, lastly, on to 1080p benchmarks. We included this because whether or not some people complain about it, we get asked about 1080p performance, especially for those who have a 1080p monitor with high-end GPUs. I'm not saying that you should have one of these GPUs with a 1080p monitor because it's not up to me how you decide to spend your money. I wouldn't though, to be honest, but you know, we're CPU bound at this resolution, but this is interesting for people who do want to know. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, we tested the same way that we did with all the previous benchmarks because that's the point of benchmarking different resolutions. In this test, we're seeing the 4080 Super pull ahead of most of the GPUs tested here. This is a pretty interesting result. This has been pretty consistent with Modern Warfare 3 with it being much faster than the 4080, right? but mainly in this benchmark alone. Next up is Cyberpunk 2077. At 1080p, the 4080 Super is considerably faster than the 4080. Again, this is pretty consistent what we saw with the rest of the testing with some titles. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we see the RTX 4080 being close to the 4080 Super in terms of overall performance. It's very close. I'm talking there's two frames in it. 
Onto Unige and Superposition, we use the 1080p Extreme benchmark here, which is quite GPU bound. There's only a single frame difference here. And lastly, Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, we're incredibly CPU bound here, and the 4080 Super is only slightly faster than the 4080. We ran our one hour stress test in Ida 64 and we couldn't get the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 4080 Super Gaming OC above 63 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. We also record hotspot temperatures now and we couldn't get it higher than 74 degrees in the same environment. This is pretty decent in terms of thermal performance. This card has one of the biggest coolers I've seen on a GPU. So the thermal performance here is no surprise which leads into the acoustics. We also observed that the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 4080 Super Gaming OC was not audible over our stress testing period with zero coil wind. This card was dead silent. On an open air system, I, I, you just can't hide the fact that something makes sounds. Now, acoustic observations, they make more sense than testing the acoustics because the measurements only tell a part of the story because there's always different environmental factors that come into account with this kind of stuff. As well as that, if you're gaming, let's be honest, just wear some headphones. Come on, you're not going to hear it. All right, what are my thoughts on the RTX 4080 Super overall? Well, I, I kind of mentioned this when we took a look at the RTX 4070 Ti Super. The only saving grace with the RTX 4080 Super is whatever stock is left of the 4080, we're gonna see prices drop for the 4080. Before the launch of the 4080 Super, we're seeing 4080 prices drop by as much as up to 300 Aussie dollars. We're also seeing prices of the 7900 XTX dropping by up to 150 Aussie dollars at the time of filming. Both the 7900 XTX and the 4080 are looking more attractive right now. They've never looked more attractive as of right now, especially if you're looking at high resolution gaming and you have the budget for it, but this is, where this is a little bit more interesting. The fact that the RTX 4080 launched at our MSRP of 1199 US dollars and the prices that we've seen over the last year have dropped to around about a thousand USD on average with small to minor price drops at sale times. The RTX 4080 Super isn't just entering the market at 200 US dollars cheaper than the launch MSRP of 1199 for the 4080 it's flat out replacing the very overpriced 4080 at launch. And that's what I'm saying. At launch, it was too expensive. Now the price has come down. I mean, it's always too expensive, let's be honest. I've always had a bit of a love-hate relationship with the 4080 anyway. It, it's good for high resolution gaming, but it's always lacked of, what's, what, what's that? It lacked, what's that word? It's oomph, right? The oomph that the 4090 has. It's always been a bit of a tough card for me to recommend in general because it's just that the 4090 is so much more performant and you're spending so much money on a graphics card as it is. So yeah, it's just one of those weird areas. All right, I'm probably wrong here, but as usual, you know, the internet, it's gonna tell me I'm wrong, but I feel kind of the same about the 4080 Super. Sure, it's slightly faster in some instances, and it's supposed to be around 200 USD cheaper at MSRP, but actually finding one at that MSRP cost for the 4080 Super, it's gonna be impossible. I'm calling it now, you'll not be able to buy any MSRP cards at launch, and if you can, you're a lucky duck. Luck's got nothing to do with it though, because even though the performance is slightly better, I still feel as, though the 4080 Super could be at least another 100 US dollars cheaper. I know it's wishful thinking, but you know, that's just how I feel about it. With saying all that, make sure you go and check out Hardware Unboxed video on the 4080 Super because they go into way more detail than we do with all of their GPU launches. And if you haven't subscribed to Hardware Unboxed for some reason, go and throw them a sub because they absolutely deserve it because the amount of hard work that they put into making these videos. If you're interested in the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 Supercard, they're starting at 999 US dollars. That's the MSRP. The version that we have here will probably be a little bit higher in price. I would guess anywhere from around 50 to 150 US dollars more and that's pretty normal with these OC cards. And as I said a few times in this video, I'm not sure this video will mean much without our own 7900 XTX results, but 
it kind of bums me out that I couldn't give you our results, but at the same time, Hardware and Box came in clutch and helped us out with giving you guys some type of indication of the performance here. Again, I gotta say it, shout out to Hardware and Box, you guys are the best. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, I get it, All right, I get it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seeking. Here's a video up here. Let's put a hardware and box video up there, Claire. That, that's the right thing to do. Watch this hardware and box video right here. It's gonna be a good one. Always saving the day. <laughs> this is what I love about the YouTube community, Claire. Everyone helps everyone out. It's it's a nice feeling. It's it's nice. it's really nice. I feel a lot better about this video now. Yeah. Thanks for watching.